Hey guys, Matt Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our 30X Special Drill Block Test Series. And today we're going to look at the Barnes TAC TX flat base, uh, all copper, large hollow point bullet. And uh, this is the last of the all copper bullets I'll be testing in 30X Special. I've got, I think, three more of the XTP variations coming up here to finish out this series. Uh, and those will be coming up pretty shortly. Uh, all, all are in editing right now. And, uh, but this is the, the military law enforcement version of this bullet. And this was probably the star of the 357 Magnum test that we did as far as the personal defense bullet, all the way down to the, the two inch, uh, the two inch Rossi stub nose in 357. These things did amazing. So I was pretty excited to get these in 38 special and see what they would do and see where that lower velocity limit was, uh, that we got our, our, outstanding performance out of these was so and we found it so stay tuned and we'll turn around and take a good look at the loading and then we'll get on out to the range all right so the loading here is uh cci small pistol primers uh alliant power pistol powder of course the barnes uh tac tx fb here's a good look at those with the part numbers on them and the loading it gives you a good look at about how much of this bullet is down in this case. And of course, 38 special brass. And let's see if I can get zoomed in here on this hollow point. So this, this is a pretty significant hollow point down in this bullet. Uh, so once it gets uh, material down in there, if the velocity is anywhere close to being uh, adequate for expansion, this thing just uh, pops right open. So, uh, all right, guys, let's get out to the range and see how this thing does in the jail. All right, guys, next up is the Barnes TAC TX 125 grain all copper bullet. This bullet's got a very large hollow point on it. Uh, this bullet also did very well uh, in the 357 Magnum with the two inch revolver. So really curious to see how it does with this lower power 38. And this bullet is designed for low velocity expansion. So this will be a very good test of this bullet, uh, especially when we get down to the two inch Rossi. All right, velocity, 1164.2. And pretty sure we got a catch, let's go check it out. All right, so one track starting right here and we get some pretty quick expansion out of this thing. Um, some nice action there uh, by inch and a half, two inches in that carries all the way down to about six. Then it looks like we've got some rotating tumbling going on, opens back up for a nice permanent wound cavity around eight inches that carries out to about 11, 11 and a half. And here is our bullet. Looks like we're at 14 and a quarter inches of total penetration. And apparently we just got partial expansion out of this. Looks like a couple of the pedals on one side did not open up. So, uh, all right guys. 14 and a quarter inches with partial expansion. Let's go back and try that uh, six and a half inch Taurus and see how it does. All right, next up is the Taurus Tracker, six and a half inch barrel with the Barnes TAC TX 125 grain all copper hollow point. Velocity of 1163. Let's go see if we got the catch. So our wound track is right here and we've got nice permanent wound cavity down through here. It looks like we got immediate expansion completely opened up here by about an inch and a half, two inches. And we can see the spiral rotation as we move down through here. And right here, this bullet edges up, goes, it's actually a little bit through and behind the rifle bullet track. 
and we stop right down here just short of where the rifle bullet is. Looks like we're sitting on about 13 and a half inches of penetration, and it appears that we might have got good expansion on this bullet as well. So, all right, guys, better expansion from the six and a half inch tracker than we did from the uh, 20 inch R92. Let's go back and try the GP100. All right, this is the Ruger five inch GP100 with the Barnes TX 125 grain all copper hollow point. And I'm gonna try to lay this one above the last two. Velocity of 1160.8. And I think we got the catch. Let's go find out. Wound track starts right here, opens up nicely. Nice big permanent wound cavity down through here. And then we exit the block right at 13 inches. So let's go reshoot that one. All right, GP100, five inch. Shot number two with the Barnes Tac TX 125 grain. And I'll see if I can keep this one in the block. And we did not pick up the velocity on that one. Let's go see if we got the catch. So wound track starting right here. And there was the first wound track. So these are the two wound tracks from the five inch Ruger. And they both look very nice. Uh, substantial uh, permanent wound cavity, nice expansion right up here at the front. And unfortunately, they, they, they pull almost the exact same trick all the way down through the block. Looks like the second shot exited just a half inch or so past the first one out here at about 13 and a half inches. So, all right, let's go try for number three, guys. Ruger GP100, five inch barrel, shot number three with the Barnes 125 grain TAC TX bullet. Get a velocity that time, 1225. It's quite a bit faster than the first velocity we had. And I hope we got a catch. I'm afraid to say at this point. All right, guys, so I intentionally took a high shot on this one uh, to account for this thing angling down. Right here is our, our wound track starting. We got nice expansion in here, about an inch, inch and a half. And this permanent wound cavity follows all the way down through here, lays right in behind one of the other ones. And then comes out to about 14 and a half inches of total penetration. We do have complete, well, we have all the pedals opened up on this one, it appears, but not completely. And some of those pedals not completely opening up is probably what accounts for this thing steering crooked, turning, and you know, angling and working its way through the gel block and not traveling in a straight line. So, here's a top side view. Let's go back and see what the, uh, the three inch Rossi can do with this bullet. All right, next up is the three inch Rossi RP63 with the Barnes TAC TX 125 grain bullet. And I'm gonna get over here beside the bench again and attempt to put this one on the left side of the gel block so we can get a, a better look at wound cavity out this one. And I think I already see that we didn't get a catch. 12.15 on the velocity. That 
little skim just barely across the top of the gel block. So let's go for shot two. No velocity that time. Did get a catch. So the wound track for this uh, three inch Rossi starts right here. Doesn't look like we got any expansion up front. Moving down through here. Right here, the bullet is flipping. We got a decent permanent wound track. And in this area, it starts to curve down straight line penetration and looks like we have total penetration of about 17 and three quarter inches with no apparent expansion at all on that bullet. So we caught something else too. Anyway, let's go back and try the, uh, the two inch Rossi. All right, next up is the Barnes Type TX 125 grain all copper hollow point in the two inch Rossi snub nose. No velocity. Let's go see if we got a catch real quick. Get a cast. So I'm going to go ahead and run another one of these into the back stop to try to catch the velocity on this. And we did get a velocity of 1069.8 feet per second. Let's go see what it did in the gel block. So one track starting right here, we have no expansion, straight line penetration down and appears this bullet starts flipping somewhere in that six inch neighborhood right in this area, which carries on down to around 10 with a decent permanent wound cavity. Then it's just straight line penetration all the way down here, just into the second gel block. We're looking at about 16 and a half inches of total penetration, guys. So, all right, that wraps up the, uh, the Barnes 125 grain Tac TX bullet. And penetration down in the shorter barrels, uh, but expansion is uh, not not as good as I was expecting it, honestly. Out of the, the five inch area barrels, not too bad, but I was really had having higher hopes for the, for the shorter barrels to get some expansion on those, so, all right. So here's a look at our finished results. And uh, this is the 20 inch rifle and we did not get complete expansion on this one. And I was actually surprised I honestly think this is a fluke. I think if we'd shot more uh, more of these through the rifle, that this is probably not going to be the typical result. Um, but it is what we got on the single shot. This is the six and a half inch Taurus. This is exactly what we were expecting uh, for this round. Uh, the five inch GP100. Uh, actually, I shot three different rounds of this. Uh, temporary wound cavity was very nice and substantial with all three rounds. Two of these exited out the side of the block. One of these you can actually see in slow motion, the second one that exited the block. Uh, it did look like it was expanded, you know, pretty much all the way through. I'm guessing though that we had similar expansion with all three shots and this one, one wing over here that wasn't expanding quite as far, probably was what was steering this bullet uh, to the right and out of the gel block. Uh, the three inch and the two inch, uh, absolutely no hint 
that either one of these were trying to open up and we did get significant temporary uh, temporary wound channel with these uh, when they started flipping as they went through the block similar to what the uh, Lehigh Defense Extreme uh, Extreme Defender did. But we did, since these were a heavier bullet, we did drive these in deeper. I think these were in somewhere around uh, 16 and maybe 18 inches of total penetration. So, you know, the, the velocity of the three inch was about the low limit uh, for the expansion on this, which is actually kind of deceiving. Uh, actually, the, the five inch uh, was just a little bit slower on the velocity than what this one was. So maybe the fact that this one didn't open up was just a fluke as well. But I'm gonna say that somewhere uh, just south of 1200 foot per second is where uh, this bullet is gonna stop expanding. And uh, for 38 special, that, that actually hits uh, in that two to, to three to four inch barrel uh, length distance. So, uh, all right guys. So the Barnes TAC TX uh, flat base bullet, uh, 125 grain, and out of the longer barrels, this bullet uh, it did amazing, similar to the results that we got all the way down out of the two inch with the 357 mag load. But in that two, three, and possibly up to the four inch barrel length, this uh, this bullet just does not have enough velocity in 38 special to uh, to open up, and. Uh, doesn't mean that it, it can't be effective. Uh, it was as effective as the 100 grain Lehigh Defense Extreme Defender bullet was in that it did uh, it did go in and flip and tumble and we got a really nice temporary and, uh, and some permanent wound cavity damage uh, when this thing started flipping. Uh, and we did get some really good penetration out of this. Uh, penetration with the heavier bullet was looking at about 16, I think, and 18 inches of, uh, of overall penetration for the three inch and 16 inches with the with the two inch model. So uh, uh, Barnes Tac TX, uh, this would make a good bullet. Uh, definitely the five five inch barrel pistol and longer, this bullet shines even in 38 special. So uh, you know the penetration was not huge. I think we were down around 14 inches. Take a quick look at my cheat sheet here. Tac TX. We were at 14 with the rifle, 13 and a half with the six and a half inch, and 14 and a half again with the five inch barrel. So 14 and a half inches of penetration and pretty much uh, total expansion on this uh, out of the uh, out of the longer barrel 38 special. So all right, guys, got any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, Matt from Kentucky Range Time. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, you guys are the reason I do this, and you guys are also the reason that my page is starting to take off and doing so well. And for that, I sincerely thank you guys, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next one.